What is the most critical step in performing a successful venipuncture? A. Choosing the largest vein. B. Assembling the necessary equipment. C. Identifying the patient correctly. D. Applying a tourniquet. Answer. C. Patient identification is the most important step to ensure specimen accuracy and patient safety. What should be done if blood flow stops during a venipuncture? A. Immediately remove the needle. B. Push the needle further into the vein. C. Slightly reposition the needle without reinserting. D. Tap the vein repeatedly. Answer. C. Repositioning slightly can re-establish flow if the needle has shifted, reinserting increases risk. A tourniquet should not be left on for more than how many minutes? A. 2. B. 5. C. 3. D. 1. Answer. D. Prolonged tourniquet application, 1 minute, can cause hemoconcentration and affect test results. The proper needle angle for antecubital venipuncture is A. 10 to 15 degrees B. 25 to 30 degrees C. 45 to 60 degrees D. 15 to 30 degrees Answer. D. The ideal angle is between 15 to 30 degrees to enter the vein efficiently without overshooting. Which site is most commonly used for venipuncture in adults? A. Basilic vein B. Cephalic vein C. Median cubital vein D. Radial artery Answer. C. The median cubital vein is large, stable, and has the lowest risk of nerve damage. What is the appropriate action if the patient complains of sharp pain during needle insertion? A. Continue drawing blood. B. Ask them to stay still. C. Stop the procedure immediately. D. Change the arm. Answer. C. Pain could indicate nerve involvement or improper needle placement. Stop immediately. Which of the following errors can cause hemolysis? A. Using a large bore needle. B. Gently mixing tubes. C. Forcing blood into the tube. D. Drawing without a tourniquet. Answer. C. Forcing blood into tubes under pressure breaks red cells, causing hemolysis. When should the tourniquet be released during a venipuncture? A. After needle removal. B. Once blood flow begins. C. Before labeling the tubes. D. After all tubes are collected. Answer. B. Releasing the tourniquet once blood flow is established prevents hemoconcentration. What is the primary risk of using the basilic vein for venipuncture? A. Poor blood flow. B. It rolls easily. C. Proximity to major arteries and nerves. D. Difficulty to locate. Answer. C. The basilic vein is close to the brachial artery and median nerve, increasing injury risk. Which action is incorrect during a venipuncture procedure? A. Palpating with the index finger. B. Anchoring the vein below the puncture site. C. Inserting the needle bevel up. D. Repalpating the site after disinfection. Answer. D. Repalpating after cleaning can contaminate the site and increase infection risk. What should be done if the vein is not visible or palpable? A. Start for access. B. Ask to switch to capillary draw. C. Warm the site and recheck. D. Use any vein available. Answer. C. Warming dilates veins and improves visibility and palpability. During a routine draw, the patient begins to faint. What is the first response? A. Finish the draw quickly. B. 
B. Remove the needle and lower their head. C. Splash water on their face. D. Have them stand up. Answer, B. Removing the needle and preventing injury is priority when fainting occurs. The most appropriate method to anchor the vein before puncture is A. Above the insertion site B. With two fingers close together C. By pulling the skin taut below the puncture site D. Wrapping the arm in gauze Answer, C. Pulling the skin below the site stabilizes the vein and reduces movement. When using a butterfly needle, the angle of entry should be A. 30 to 45 degrees B. 15 degrees or less C. 45 to 60 degrees D. Greater than 60 degrees Answer, B. Butterfly needles are inserted at shallow angles due to their short needle length. How many times should tubes containing anticoagulants be inverted? A. 2 to 3 times. B. 8 to 10 times. C. 12 to 15 times. D. Not inverted at all. Answer. B. Proper inversion ensures mixing with the anticoagulant and prevents clotting. A collapsed vein during venipuncture can be caused by A. Overuse of alcohol swab B. Too tight tourniquet C. Using too large a vacuum tube D. Excessive warming Answer, C. High vacuum pressure can collapse fragile veins, especially in elderly patients. If a patient has a known mastectomy on the left side, which site should be used? A. Left arm. B. Right arm. C. Left wrist. D. Either arm. Answer. B. Avoid drawing from the same side as a mastectomy to prevent lymphedema. What is the best way to prevent rolling of the vein during venipuncture? A. Use a larger gauge needle. B. Anchor the vein firmly. C. Insert at a steeper angle. D. Tie the tourniquet tighter. Answer, B. Firm anchoring keeps the vein stable and prevents rolling under the skin. Blood should never be drawn from a site with A. Scars B. Tattoos C. Bruises or hematoma D. Freckles Answer, C. Bruised or hematoma sites may affect specimen integrity and cause more trauma. For geriatric patients, the best strategy is to A. Avoid use of gloves B. Use a large needle C. Apply tourniquet tightly D. Use smaller gauge and shorter needle Answer, D. Fragile veins in elderly patients require gentle handling with smaller needles. What step follows immediately after needle withdrawal? A. Bandaging B. Applying pressure to sight C. Discarding the needle D. Labeling tubes Answer, B. Apply pressure immediately to stop bleeding and avoid hematoma formation. Drawing from a patient standing upright increases risk of A. Better vein visualization. B. Fainting and injury. C. More efficient blood flow. D. Less contamination. Answer. B. Standing increases vasovagal reaction risk. Phlebotomy should be done sitting or lying. Hemoconcentration affects which test result the most? A. Glucose. B. Electrolytes. C. Platelet count. D. Hematocrit. Answer, D. Hemoconcentration falsely elevates cellular components like hematocrit. Which tube should be drawn first in a standard multi-tube draw? A. EDTA. B. Serum separator. C. 
blood culture? D. Sodium fluoride. Answer, C. Blood culture must be first to avoid contamination from additives in other tubes. What is the primary risk of probing the needle to find a vein? A. Faster blood collection. B. Reduced vein collapse. C. Increased pain and nerve damage. D. Better sight access. Answer, C. Probing increases trauma, pain, and risk of damaging nearby structures. The correct order of draw prevents. A. Cross-contamination between additives. B. Tube breakage. C. Improper specimen labels. D. Needle dislodgement. Answer, A. Order of draw prevents carryover of additives that can interfere with test results. What could happen if the site is not allowed to dry after cleaning? A. Hemolysis. B. Skin burn and stinging. C. Poor vein access. D. Increased clotting. Answer, B. Alcohol can enter the puncture site and cause a stinging or burning sensation. What is the minimum information required on a labeled blood tube? A. Date only. B. Patient initials. C. Full name, DOB, date time of collection. D. Test type only. Answer, C. Proper labeling includes full name, DOB, collection date time for traceability. Which vein is typically the second choice after the median cubital? A. Radial. B. Basilic. C. Cephalic. D. Femoral. Answer. C. The cephalic vein is a suitable secondary option due to accessibility and safety. If a patient refuses a blood draw, what should the phlebotomist do? A. Proceed after explaining procedure. B. Force gently with nurse's help. C. Respect refusal and notify the nurse. D. Wait and try again later. Answer. C. Patient autonomy must be respected. Refusal should be documented and reported.